Here is the third and final part of my conversation about wrestling with Randy. Yeah. No one saw that coming. You know, yeah. it was like, what? You know, and they turned, uh, you know, stone cold heel, which I tell you back then over the years, that, that became harder and harder to do. Yeah. <laughs> stone cold was one of those guys that I remember they were trying so hard to make this guy a heel. And I forget when this, where in his run this was, but they were trying everything they could to make people hate him, to yeah. get him heat. And no matter what he did, people just kept cheering. Yeah. I mean, and I think part of the first mistake was they tried to do it in Austin. They tried to do it in Texas, uh, which is his hometown. And yeah. it's like backfired so badly. Yeah. I mean, he said the worst things he could say about the crowd and they just, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it just didn't matter. And so yeah. it's like to, to do something like that, to turn him heel, you know, that was a pretty big thing. So uh, yeah. that worked pretty well then. But I know what you're talking about. Where it's, it's There's been some recent things. turns that mm-hmm. were done well. Yeah. Some of them were a little... You could see it coming, but Seth Rollins turning on the shield was Man. well done. Yeah, yeah. With well, the whole bit, talking about earlier pet peeves and things we were talking about, this kind of falls in line with that. And another thing I was talking about earlier, my least favorite storylines, what they're doing with Seth Rollins right now, and I'd be interested to get your take on this, is the whole Messiah, Monday Night Messiah thing. It's one of those things that they're, they're dancing right on, on the line right there. You know, They're just kind of dangling – real close, you know, to that whole religious territory. I mean, from the the image of him on the big jumbotron, it's like a stained glass window, you know, and he's kind of looks like Christ or something in a stained glass Uh, window kind of look. You know, they're just implying these things, and he's calling people his disciples and – you know, you're you're gonna sacrifice. You know, you're sacrificing. I guess it works as a heel, though, because like, it does. But once again, they're, they're just dangerously himself. close. To, I, just the whole religious thing. I'm just it, yeah. for me, I was like, he doesn't. I mean, he he can be a heel. Yeah. Without doing that, I think he can. Like I said, I'm I'm just kind yeah. of waiting to see where they go with it. But the whole Messiah thing just yeah. it bugs me. You know, mm-hmm. it's like uh, I don't know about that. You know. Yeah. CM Punk once said that I am God, mm. and I think some other wrestlers right. have said that too, and that's right. a little... Yeah. Well, then there's the whole famous incident with uh, ECW, if you haven't ever seen the ECW documentary, The Rise of the ECW, where they talk about, <laughs> uh, who was that guy? He was in WWF uh, for a while, uh, Raven. Yeah. He had a whole bit where he brought a guy out, like, tied up to a cross. He was oh, all, yeah. like, yeah. tied up and hanging there, you know? Yeah. Beat up, you know, and they brought him out or put him on the cross. And yeah. Kurt Angle was actually backstage. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hadn't he come out yet. That, yeah. yeah, he was backstage because they he was thinking about signing with them and being a part. And yeah. he had come out for like a little promo and hadn't really done anything. And he was backstage watching. And when he saw that, he was like, "I'm done. Yeah. I don't want. To, I do. I don't want to see my face on on my name on any of your broadcasts. You know, I don't want to be associated with you." So you got to be careful with that stuff, man. And then they quickly apologize yeah. for that. They realize they went too far. So Definitely. All right. So what about managers? What do you think of the whole idea of managers? Do you have favorites or do you think it's better when they don't have managers? <clears throat> well, I think there was a time when I think it was very effective. I mean, if you watch a lot of the old classic WWF stuff, you know, mm-hmm. from 80s and 90s, you know, especially the late 80s and around those first four, five, six WrestleManias, seven WrestleManias. Man, you had it was it was the golden age of the of the manager where you had mm-hmm. Jimmy Hart and you had Bobby the Brain Heenan and you had Harvey Whippleman and you had <clears throat> what's his name with the tennis racket? Uh, oh, Jim on. Cornette. Jim Cornette, and uh, you had uh, the guy that that managed. Doom, Teddy Long, Sherry Martell. I mean, it was a golden age, you know, where you had these guys that were kind of the mouthpiece. They were entertaining, you yeah. know, and they probably have sometimes two or three wrestlers in their faction, and these are the guys that I manage. And it kind of added a little bit more of a realism to it. Hey, these are my guys, yeah. you know. But now it's it's kind of hard. Uh, I don't – it's like I, I, I want to see guys that can actually cut a promo. I mean, I want to see wrestlers that can get on the mic. That's just kind of part of the job. Yeah. So, like, things with Brock Lesnar, that's kind of a good example of all of, all of this. Because I, I, that's the one issue I've had with the guy. As good as he is in the ring, he is just horrible on the mic. Yeah. The guy literally just, he just cannot cut a promo. Mm-hmm. And that's why they give him Paul Heyman, you know, a mouthpiece. And I think it yeah. works for him 
you know, he's, he's had runs without Paul Heyman, or yeah. he's, you know, but obviously it's not his strength. He's just so right. believable. <clears throat> he's got such a, a you know, a right. believable look, and he's real, and right. that's why he's able to kind of do it. But yeah, he definitely needs that mouthpiece. Right. There's two. There's a lot of managers that are forgetful to me, but there's two in particular that stick out as just extremely entertaining. Right. One is Paul Heyman. Right. The other one is <laughs> Vicky Guerrero. Man, my wife hates her, and it's really? funny. She's someone who doesn't watch wrestling. Yeah. She'd be in the other room, and if Vicky Guerrero came on, and she went, "Excuse me," <laughs> she would like, "Oh my gosh, I hate her!" From the other room. Yeah. Just got on her nerves, and she didn't even watch. And she's like, so Vicky, yeah. Vicky should be proud if Vicky Guerrero yeah. ever ever hears this, which I doubt she will. But you yeah. know, she really did her job. I mean, her job was to annoy the crap out of yeah the crowd, and she annoyed people that weren't even watching the show in the other room. Yeah. I mean, oh, she hated her. But I think she was really <laughs> good at being a heel. <laughs> mm-hmm. So yeah, there's not a lot uh, anymore. I mean, Lana was kind of like that. Oh yeah, yeah. I you know, because she's not a great wrestler but yeah. they keep her around as a personality right. you know i mean when she was with rusev and now he's gone and she was with bobby and they're doing that thing mm-hmm. with her and bobby and uh mvp you know but she's kind of the manager type and there's the girl that that does the latino wrestlers uh andrade and yeah and that her um they kind of full-time manager kind of things but other than that you know most most people kind of have to carry their own now yeah, um, I think we're kind of kind of past that time where. Who's the guy that managed Jack Swagger and the wheelchair, Jack Swagger. The long mustache? Oh, I remember that dude. Walking yeah, across yeah, yeah, our yeah, borders. Yes. Yeah, I forget what his name was. That guy actually, believe it or not, it's funny. I saw, a, I saw a documentary about some other one mm-hmm. of these other prom- old promotions, <clears throat> and it turns out that guy was a wrestler in one of those old promotions before he did that. Yeah, he was known for. You know, I saw him and went, hey, that's that dude. So, yeah. Yeah. So I guess they thought he'd make a good personality. I remember that guy. I remember him. I just can't remember his name. Mm-hmm. Jeez. That's good. So, yeah, I think it, maybe it shouldn't be like common a common <clears throat> thing, but I think maybe there's some young wrestlers that maybe have right. some talent but aren't ready to be right um, talkers that are, you know, on the mic that maybe could use a, some, a manager to help. Right. Mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart. Remember those guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Those days are gone. Okay, so you wanted to talk about part-time wrestlers. Yeah, I just wanted to. (laughs) Right, I want to get your opinion on what do you think about uh, part-time wrestlers, guys that don't, you know, they're not there on TV every week. Uh, They show up for pay-per-views once in a while. You know, kind of the part-time, you kind of like Goldberg, for example, who shows up right. once in a while here or there. Of course, Undertaker, of course, his deal was he got to the point where he was just doing WrestleMania every year, and you kind of right. expected him to have a match. But my thing is, when they give these wrestlers titles, yeah. um, and Brock Lesnar is a great example of that. Yeah. I mean, I like Brock Lesnar a lot, and I didn't mind him, you know, showing up on pay-per-views and having storylines and matches. But when they gave him the title... And he held the title for like long periods of time Um, and, you know, but didn't do TV on Mondays or Thursdays or whatever. I mean, um, to me, I want to see the title holder at least, you know, on television once a week, wrestle a match, do something. Yeah. You know, I think it depends um, who it is or when it's done. Sometimes it's underwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, when The Rock came in and beat uh, Cena for the title. Right. And then he was gone. <clears throat> I, I guess he lost it real quickly. <clears throat> yeah, that wasn't a long time. He was gone. Thing. Um, yeah. With Lesnar, I think for a while it was it was a heel storyline where he only fought in pay-per-views. Uh, but I think it went on way too long. Right. So I think it was, it was one of those things that were building up that who's going to finally beat this guy. Right. And he was built, especially after he beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania, he's been built, he was built up as this unbeatable guy. He right. destroyed Cena right. at a SummerSlam. Right. Um, I don't know if that was following The Undertaker or before that, but um, they kind of built him up as this unbeatable guy and who would be the guy to... Right. So that was kind of, I, I saw a purpose to that, but they kind of took that too long, you know. Right. 
I mean, I've never had a problem with them bringing in, like when they brought in Goldberg and gave him the title, but the purpose of it was was to get to the next pay-per-view. Yeah. One or two later, like a WrestleMania is coming up, and we want to set up this huge match with mm-hmm. Goldberg versus what, X. Okay? And we lose it again. Right. And that's fine. That serves a purpose. We want to yeah. get from here to here with the tit- and have this great match here. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with that. I mean, that's kind of what they did with The Rock. Yeah. You know, they were trying to set up a match. He wanted here, and they wanted to set up a match for here. Yeah. But Brock was this thing where he signed, like, this long, like, two-year mm-hmm. contract where he just came in and did pay-per-views, only had to work so many dates. And I didn't understand, personally, why he couldn't at least do television. It's not like they're asking you to go on the road like they did in the old days and do all the live house shows and, you know, at least show up on Monday nights to Raw. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, have a match. I mean, there could have been something. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hey, that was the deal, and and I don't blame him for taking the deal. I mean, they offered it to him and said, hey, you don't, you know, you only have to show up at pay-per-views and do promos once in a while or just stand there while yeah. Paul cuts a promo. It's a pretty sweet deal. He made, like, a butt-ton of money. So yeah. can't blame him for it. Um, but for me, uh, you know, if you're holding a title, I want to see you regularly on TV and be a part of things, mm-hmm. you know. I heard Vince Russo happen. talking about that recently, who used to write for wrestling <clears throat> for WWE. Right. And he talked about how if he, if he was writing now, he would um, maybe record a bunch of things that happen on the street or whatever with right. him and then make them happen over several episodes <clears throat> so that he appears more often, even if he's not working a, you know full time. So Because right. he is a draw. So right. somehow have him on the television every week, um, even if it's pre-recorded or something. Right. So Well, Lesnar's one of those guys that, once again, he's... He's a Vince McMahon favorite, you know. He loves him. Yeah. He likes the look. He likes his ability. He's a great heel. And, you know, he just thinks that every time you have a pay-per-view and he's in it, you know, it's, you know, people are going to watch it. But the problem is it got to the point where you knew, you know, he's not going to lose the title. He's not going to lose the title at Backlash or yeah. Great American Bash or whatever little small pay-per-view in between the big pay-per-view. You knew it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Um, and if he even showed up and did the pay per view, he would just, there wouldn't be a title match at that pay per view for that title. And I'm like, come on. Yeah. You know, so that would never happen in the old days. Is he but, the one <clears throat> guy you're thinking of? Because I'm trying to think of others that. Um, I'm trying to think part timers that they ever gave time. I mean, he, he comes long. to mind just because it wasn't just for a little bit. I mean, yeah, it was a long, significant period that they just years. hung the title on him um, yeah. while he was part time. And I'm trying to think of anybody else they ever did that with. Um, like I said, it, it, it depends on what they're doing with it, you know. Yeah. If it's they're trying to set up a certain match, and that means at, you know, Royal Rumble, we're going to have him win. So that at WrestleMania, we can set this match up, you know, between these two guys. Especially when they've got mm-hmm. a bunch of guys on the roster that have a lot of talent that right. should be able to carry the promotion. Absolutely. All right, so I think we can wrap this up with our – uh, maybe future stars that are there that haven't been pushed yet that you think could be top okay. level talents. Who's your first one? So my first one, uh, we'll do three men, three women. Okay. Uh, my my first man is Big E Langston. Okay. I think he's gotten over uh, with the New Day gimmick, and mm-hmm. I think he's got the size to maybe. I would love to see him with <clears throat> against Lesnar or against. Um, do for a push. Some of the big um, stars. Right. Well, first I'd have to bring Lesnar back into the fold. I don't know. Yeah, or if, you know, whoever the big yeah. guys are, Roman Reigns and Biggie, or, you know, something you like that. You think he would be a face or you think he would be a heel? Because <sighs> someone's going to have to break up the, the, the new yeah. day. I mean, someone's got to be a heel. Someone's gotta I, think be... it, I think I could see Xavier Woods playing a, a Seth Rollins type heel. Yeah. So, but I could see, I, I think he could do both. But right. um, he's he's a pretty good baby face right now. Well, uh, one of my fir- first guy on my list that I think is is every time I watch him, he's insanely talented, blows me away. Um, and I think I, I just think the sky's the limit for the guy is Murphy. Mm. Um, so you, you know who Murphy is, the British redhead, kind of stocky. Okay. He's one of Seth Rollins' disciples right at, right oh. now for the time being. I haven't been watching recently. But, so. um, man, Murphy and Fade to Black, uh, Aleister uh, Black. Okay. Him and Aleister Black, starting over here, Murphy and Aleister Black um, had a series of matches that were just incredible. And Aleister is also, he was 
I mean, he's a guy that I think is going to be given a huge push, I think, very soon. Mm. I'll get to him, but he's uh, – but Murphy and Alistair Black – are they a tag team now? No. Okay. No, no, no. Murphy is one of the disciples. Alistair Black is actually, oh. you know, having a feud with Seth and his guys. So, mm -hmm. but they had a series of matches that were just incredible. Anything that's got Murphy in it, the guy is, he does moves that just blow your mind. Mm -hmm. um, so athletic, so talented. So he's a guy to watch. Um, I don't know what direction they're going to go with him in the future. Um, you know, obviously when they finally break up the whole Messiah gang or whatever, I don't know if he'll be the guy that maybe breaks off. They kind of hinted at it, uh -huh. um, you know, so maybe he will. But I think I think that guy has got nothing but potential. So uh -huh. I think he's going to do huge things. My second one has been at the top before, and then he's been in a tag team for the last, I don't know, five years, and that's Sheamus. Yeah. And I think he's definitely <clears throat> worthy of being a top single star. Um, I could say the same for Cesaro, but I pick, you know, Seamus. Uh, I would love to see Seamus, well, you know, if Brock Lesnar ever comes back, Seamus versus Lesnar or Seamus versus Roman Reigns. Right. Seamus versus Big E, um, although they've had matches, but at a top level, Seamus versus The Miz, you know, there's so many different options. Right. Um, right now, it's Seamus versus uh, Jeff Hardy is what they're pushing, so. Yeah. So, well, he's got mic skill. I think that's what sets him apart from, from Cesaro. Cesaro. Yeah. I think he and Cesaro worked great as a tag team because Sheamus could do a lot of the heavy lifting on yeah. the mic, uh, cutting promos. Cesaro's yeah. incredible in the ring. Yeah. And he's a guy that I wish they do more with. But, yeah. you know, he, he seems to work good in tag teams when he's got a, uh, someone else to kind of help cut promos and kind of share the load. Yeah. Um, he works really well. Or if he's got a, a manager, you know, like when he had for a while, mm -hmm. Sami Zayn. Yeah. Uh, you know, that whole faction. It worked really well. So uh, hopefully, you know, he and Shinsuke will, will continue doing your tag team thing. But, yeah. but I think you're right. I think Sheamus is, is a great singles guy. And I think Shinsuke would be a, a honorable <clears throat> mention for me. Yeah. Uh, my second guy, I uh, mentioned him earlier. Well, I talked about him a little bit, is, is Ricochet. Mm -hmm. um, I really hope. Um, that they bring him back into the fold. He's kind of faded out. Uh, last I read, he was doing some tag team stuff, but I haven't seen him recently, so I don't know if he's been on NXT or SmackDown. I think technically he's still listed as being uh, part of SmackDown, but we can find that out in two seconds as I look at my little list of superstars here while we're talking. Um, he's actually listed as being on Raw. So he, uh, uh, from what I understand, they've been using him in some tag team stuff. I really hope... Um, that they bring him back. He is an insane arsenal of moves and abilities and skills in the ring. Incredible. Mm -hmm. So the problem when a guy's that good is you got to find people that can keep up and have great matches with him. You know? Yeah. So, you know, that's, you know, like Neville. Remember Neville? Yeah. Boy, he was amazing. Someone like Neville and Ricochet could have incredible matches um, if Neville was back in the WWE, but who knows if he'll come back. Um, but I think Ricochet is a, is a guy that, that I think can do a ton uh, yeah. of stuff, especially like with the Intercontinental or U.S. Championship. He can do a lot. Or him and Kofi, <clears throat> maybe. Yeah, yeah, for uh, sure, absolutely. Baron Corbin is my third, although he's kind of been you know, more of a top storyline anyway, but mm -hmm. uh, he's pretty young, and I could see him as a top, top guy. Whether yeah. it's a heel, I mean, he's definitely already a good heel, right? Um, he could possibly develop, and, and we don't know that yet. But we haven't really seen him as a baby face, right? But uh, I think there's more for him, definitely. Right. The, the sky's the limit. Well, I think it's obvious Vince loves him, so because then yeah. I mean, he constantly you you know brings him into storylines constantly. If something is getting old, he'll bring Baron Corbin into do his yeah. king bit and beat him up or whatever and have a heel. So start another thing. So, I mean, I, I think there's a good yeah. chance that he'll he'll be in a, in a pretty big storyline coming up. My third is, I uh, mentioned him earlier, is Aleister Black. Man, he's kind of old school. You know, he's kind of got that, he's kind of like a male version of uh, Ronda Rousey, kind of a striker MMA kind of thing. You know, just mm -hmm. lots of strikes, kicks. Uh, he just, everything he does looks like he just is just, polarizing the other guy you know it looks like oh my gosh that breaks someone's jaw you know um, all his kicks and all the things that he does he's very athletic 
and I love his, his gimmick. I like I like his angle, that whole dark thing that he does. It's kind of a Undertaker-esque kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, he cuts really great promos that remind me a lot of Undertaker stuff, you know, in the old days. So I think uh, he fills that niche, that void, because, you know, Taker is probably done. So I think he kind of fills that void for something like that. Uh, so, I'd, boy, I'd love to see him in a title run. All right, so <clears throat> women. Uh, my first woman is Ruby Riot. Just has a really awesome look, very uh, alt rock punk kind of a uh, look. And I haven't. I'm trying to remember her on the mic. If she's that good on the mic, I don't remember. But yeah, she's actually pretty good. Yeah, but I think she. I would like to see her more against uh, guys like or women like Becky Lynch and Charlotte, and, and right. having you know top headline matches. Yeah, once they broke up her faction, it seems like they haven't really quite figured out uh, what to do with her. So, yeah. um, I know that she came on and did a couple singles matches, but you know, it's with the whole COVID thing. Yeah. It's you know, it's like they're just limited to what all they can do every week. Mm-hmm. So, I think once we get through this COVID stuff and they get back to more normal programming, I think we're going to see a lot of people used a lot more doing more things. Yeah, um, I really do. My first uh, female wrestler that I'd like to see really get pushed, um, believe it or not, is Nia Jax. I really like her a lot. I think she's something different that they haven't had, you know. In male wrestling, you always have big power wrestlers, right? You always got big guys. You know, Undertaker, Sid, Kane, you know, six foot five, the giant, you know, big show. You're always going to have big guys, you know. Roman Reigns is a big guy. You know, you're always going to have these guys that fit that that niche. You don't get it a lot in yeah. women's wrestling. And Nia Jax kind of fits that big Vader, Van Vader uh, yeah. thing. You know, big big yeah. girl, but powerful and fast, and, and she's good in the ring, uh, what she does. You know what I'm saying? I think you, there's always a need for that, you know. Yeah. Uh, now you got to find other females that can have good matches with her, you know. That she can, was tag team with Tamina for a while. It's another one. Right, Tamina, right. So, Because she comes from that lineage, from all that, that family. You know, the Rock's her uncle, so yeah. uh, she knows a thing or two about wrestling. So I, I I definitely, you know, I like her as a heel. I like her as a face. You know, I think mm-hmm. she can she can do any of that. So I'm glad that her injury, she had both knees done, yeah. <laughs> worked on. I'm glad she came back from that and she's back wrestling again. So I really hope to see her do some cool stuff. Yeah. My first, uh, or my second one, is Alicia Fox. I think she's really good in the ring, very athletic, uh, has a good look. I don't know how good she is on the mic, but it seems like she could be uh, a star, out, even outside of wrestling. Um, yeah. Of course, I don't know. I guess she'd have to be an actor, <laughs> actor to do that. Yeah, uh, I think the thing that's always held, in my opinion, Alicia back is her promos. And I don't know if this is somebody writing this for her or if this is her thing that she kind of came up with. Uh, but uh, as a matter of fact, I'm looking through the current roster, and I don't know if Alicia Fox is even there. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, she's not listed. See, I haven't watched. So it she might. Okay, guys, she might. We'll, we'll give him a do-over on that one. I think she's she's off the list. But her her promo thing was always this kind of annoying kind of promo that she always did. Yeah. Uh, and I think that kept her from really. Getting over because if she wasn't good enough in the ring to overcome that, so mm-hmm. uh, I don't know where she's working now, but hopefully wherever you know, whatever she's in another promotion, maybe she'll she'll get a shot, and she'll fix that, or maybe when this is over the COVID thing and they bring some wrestlers back, maybe she'll yeah. be one of them. It's one of those that maybe the, the writing didn't do her any favors, but yeah. I see something in her right that could you know if used <clears throat> right right she could be a star. Well, my second one is uh, is Nikki Cross. Um, she's the, the, uh, Scottish psychopath as they call her. Um, I love her little, her little bit. Now I, she kind of got away from the, the whole bit that she did when she first came in, when she first came up from NXT to WWE, when they moved her up, mm-hmm. her whole bit was kind of mankind esque. I loved it. Oh. This, she's a little unhinged, you know, mm-hmm. her, her promos would always be her like behind like a chain link fence and a real dark, setting, you know, come play with Nikki, you know, like she's just, something's yeah. off, something's wrong with her. I love that. I thought that was really cool. Like, you know, whoa, this girl's, she's small, but she's going to snap, 
you know, and she's gonna hurt you. So I they kind of gotten away from that a little bit mm-hmm. um, and turned her into this kind of face kind of thing, which is fine. I like her in a tag team with, with Alexa, but I really hope that someday they kind of go back to that more unhinged mm-hmm. character because that's that's why I liked about her to begin with. So. Yeah. And I think she's establishing herself as a good wrestler, so I think that they should be open to possibilities going mm-hmm. forward with her. I hope they do. <clears throat> yeah. My third one is Naomi, uh, another athletic uh, wrestler. And I think she's pretty good on the mic, too. Yes. But, yeah, I think she should be – I would love to see her have matches more against Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair and, right. you know, Ember Moon and uh, – well, Ember Moon, not yet. She's an honorable mention. I was thinking of Asuka. Right. Um, yeah, I think Naomi should be at that level. Yeah, they keep bringing her in, um, you know, in storylines. She hasn't, I mean, she's, in, she's had some title shots, but uh, it's not like she's fallen off the map. I mean, they, you know, they keep bringing her out for matches and help, whether it's to build up the current champion or whatever. So she's definitely getting getting shots at it. So I think, I think she's good, and I think there's a possibility – that uh, she could uh, have a title run. We'll see what happens with the whole Bailey Sasha thing. I don't. I'm trying to figure out where they're going with that. Is so they're going to give Sasha the title and have them have all the titles, both championships, the tag team. Are they going to? Are yeah. they going to go there with that or <clears throat> or what? I think uh, with um, <clears throat> Becky Lynch leaving, uh, that kind of threw a wrench into this, probably some of their plans. Um, that's why Asuka has, and I love Asuka, so I think you know it's in good hands there. But yeah. I don't know where they're going with that. Uh, my third uh, is someone that's in NXT that has come up briefly, uh, had a huge match with Charlotte Flair, um, where she char- she you know wanted Charlotte to challenge her for her NXT title when Charlotte won the Money in the Bank uh, match. She wanted her to to challenge her, and that's Rhea Ripley. Um, mm-hmm. Man. I only saw her a few times. I didn't really know who she was. And then she came on the scene and did that whole bit with Charlotte Flair. And I got to tell you, I was impressed with her. And she was in that pay-per-view. Uh, and Charlotte, uh, you know, when Charlotte actually won the title uh, off of her, uh, I think it was actually WrestleMania. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The WrestleMania pay-per-view um, that they did in at the Orlando Performance Center. Uh, I was so impressed. I think that girl is amazing so i think she's got lots of possibility when they finally bring her up full time to wwe to the main roster um I, I think anything's possible i think she could have a match with any champion on any any brand so i i, I think uh i think that will happen i just don't know when but i think she's she's got it mm-hmm. you know um so she's big lean you know kind of a tall girl um just real athletic uh, in the ring so she, I mean, that match with Charlotte Flair tells you everything you need to know about her. She was, she was amazing. So, all right, so that's awesome. This was fun, and uh, I enjoyed talking wrestling with you. I appreciate it. It was, it was a blast, and we'll do it again sometime. All right.